away. There is war. The devil has gone mad. He advances like a great flood with terrorism, strange sicknesses like Ebola and other vices to steal, kill and destroy. Join Liberation Power Ministries and Time Jesus Army Edge Force in our annual September War Conference to resist and turn back the enemy. Theme, you can win the war. Conference holds every Friday, Saturday and Sunday of September 2014. Fridays, all-night invasion of demonic strongholds, 11 p.m. Saturdays, War College to train and equip end-time Holy Ghost warriors, 9 a.m. Sundays, Conference Operation and Commissioning of Frontline Fighters, 9 a.m. Ministering General Odete Stephen, GOC, Edge Force with other Holy Ghost war machines. Venue, the Edge Force Cantonment, Liberation Power Ministries, 82 Eliopawa Road, Mount 4 Port Harcourt. Jesus is man. Man of War. Wow, good evening and welcome to Edja Force Time. We give praise to God because Edja Force Time is actually a time that will stir up the people, the warriors and sleeping giants to wake up to keep the devil where he rightly belongs. Especially in this season of the 18th annual Saturday War Conference, it's my joy to announce and to declare to you that the results coming from the World Conference are awesome. Many things are happening. People are revived. Those who are, those who are spiritual prisoners of war are being delivered. And I want to assure you that if you will come the next week, because very soon it will end, we have only two weeks to go. You just hurry up to come before the conference ends so that you'll be in charge even during the ever months. Tonight, I'm going to conclude the message I started last week. No, the God will surprise your enemies. I want to tell you that those enemies that are thinking that you will never ever come out of that problem, they are wasting their time. Our God is planning. Our God is in business and he will make sure the enemy does not have the final say. Don't go away. I'm taking you to the church for the concluding part of this message. I'll write back. Um, Genesis chapter 45. Are you there now? See what the Bible says from verse 3. 3 to 5. And Joseph said unto them, eventually, after many years, after many years, somebody will come back and say, I'm sorry, you. I was the one that did this, but I didn't know that you, were, you are still alive. I'm sorry for what you went through. Well, forget about what I went through. I'm talking about celebration now. The shame and the sorrow I went through, I've forgotten. What I'm enjoying is what? Celebration, breakthroughs. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. They were surprised. Now me, now me with this. As soon as he introduced himself, I am Joseph. They fainted. They were surprised. They were not like human beings again. They said, what's going on? What, what, what are we hearing? That is what now? This is where in Egypt, this is the prime minister of Egypt we are talking with. Why is he saying it's Joseph? As they were in that state of embarrassment and surprise and they were so, so much in a state of confusion. Joseph started talking, is my father yet alive? And his brethren could not answer. They were still confused. Your, friend, your enemies will be confused though. Those who had done some things to embarrass you will be surprised. And his brethren, for they were troubled, confused, surprised, astonished. Amen. And Joseph kept talking. Joseph said to his brethren, come near to me. Don't be surprised. What you do, you don't have the final say. In my, you, don't, you don't control my destiny. Rise up and tell seven persons, you don't have power over my destiny. So don't try it. Whatever you are doing is a waste of time. The Lord has the final say. So if you are thinking you are hating me, you are reporting me, you are doing one thing or the other to bring me down, know this, you don't have the final say. I have the final say. God has the final say rather. Amen. Verse 4. And Joseph said to his brethren, come near to me. I pray you. And they came near. And he said, he repeated himself. I am Joseph. Amen. And, amen. And he said, I am Joseph, your, he now came closer. He said, I'm Joseph, your brother. Whom you what? Whom you blackmailed. Whom you, you, whom you betrayed. Whom you poisoned. And no die. <laughs> I came back with better connections. Amen? 
Now, therefore, don't be surprised. Now be angry with yourselves. This is what God can do. Don't, don't, be, don't be angry that he sold me out. Don't just begin to come. Listen to me. A time is not going to be any further time. From, from this month, we, the clock has been, because the Bible says, by him, times and seasons are changed by Jehovah. He has just changed the season of we suffering in the hands of our enemies to the season of our enemies being surprised because we have come out of the pit to become prime ministers. From poverty to become wealthy persons. From sickness to health and happy in life. I don't think somebody is hearing me now. Enemies are getting ready to, to be disappointed. Now when you look at when you look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Every day Goliath will come and show his face. In, 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 in the land of the, of the Philistines, he was a person they cannot challenge or they couldn't challenge. Because anytime he moves around, he moves with bold face. And he says, I'm Goliath. And everybody say, uh, it's only him they were bowing down to. Amen. They run away from him. Nobody ever ran to Goliath to fight him. As he's coming one leg on the ground, it will vibrate in where you are standing. So they run. They used to run. And that's what he had. As soon as he appeared at the war front, the Bible says the Israelites fled and hid themselves. That was Goliath. But very soon, surprise will hit him. Look at um, um, 1 Samuel chapter 17. See verse 43. Is somebody there now? 1 Samuel 17. See verse 43. And the Philistine, that was the first shocker. The first surprise he met. And the Philistine said unto David, uh -uh, We are talking about war. You are, what are you doing now? Am I a dog that thou comest to me with this? He never start to, your surprise never start to. The first surprise he met was somebody coming to fight him with stick. <laughs> Amen. And not with every stick. Shepherd's stick that they used to just take themselves to no help uh, animals to get to their directions. And a, a shepherd's bag with catapult in the hand. I, am I a dog? Fair surprise. Go forward and see what the Bible says um, in verse 48. Are you there? And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran away. What is there? And ran towards the army of the Philistine to meet him. The first time somebody could run to meet Goliath to fight. So somebody says surprise. Before this running, after the surprise of the dog, he could see somebody challenging him. Is it me you are talking to? Do you know me? He was telling David, David said, no, be that all. Did that time don't pass. Your enemies have expired. If you believe it, you will discover they have always, they, they have entered into the season of shame and sorrow. Now is your season to celebrate. After that challenge, David was challenging him. And as it was, that was not enough. As Goliath now started drawing near, David discovered that he was coming. David said, I will surprise you. Rise up and tell, look up and say, I will surprise my, my Lord will surprise my enemy. <laughs> say it again, oh my enemy, my God will surprise you. If you believe in shout fire. <laughs> Sit down. And to his surprise, for the first time in the war history of Goliath, somebody not even a giant like him running towards him. Somebody running towards him to fight him with empty hand. Your enemies will be surprised. And in that surprise state, that was why he didn't know when the bullet met him. He was in a state of surprise and confusion. Say, what is happening? Is that boy, what is he trying to do? Look at it now. And I'll read verse 48 again. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and, a, and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead completely for me. Your enemies will fall on their face. 
Those who have been laughing at you will fall on their faces. Those who say you will not make it in life will fall on their faces. In shame, they will bow down and surrender to you. They think that you will be run away from them forever. They think that in the dream, when they come, you will run. Very soon, you will be the one who will look for enemies in the dream to pursue them, to kill them. David ran towards the Philistine and dealt with him. And the Philistine was surprised. In his surprise state, he didn't know when bullet met him and flat on the ground. Amen. Amen. General David Stephen with some revival. Stay tuned. Edge Force don't declare Ember Month's invasion. Now for Friday nights of non-stop Holy Ghost bombardment against bad sickness and demonic attack. This one now pressure wahala for the enemy. Oh. The date now Friday the 5th of September 2014. Friday 12th of September 2014. Friday 19th September 2014. Friday 26th September 2014. And the time now 11pm every Friday. Make you know day there they sleep. Make your enemy Congo destroy your destiny. Obonga ministers for this one. Now General Day the Steven. GOC Edger Force with other Holy Ghost war machines them. And the venue Edger Force Cantonment number 82 Eliparan 1 Road. For inside my 4. For inside Porta Court. Make sure say you attend this Friday all night invasions them. For inside September, so that you go take over and celebrate for inside Ember Month. Jehovah, the man of war. General David Stevens is back. Now look at Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. See what the Bible says. In that angry state, Nebuchadnezzar commanded that Dev I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should be bound and be cast into the fire. And so, look at verse 20, 22. Verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that, that were in, the, in his army to do what? To bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, Abednego to do what? To cast and cast and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. He was in a hurry. He said, tie them. Who are they? Have they been challenging you and your God? What can you? He has challenged uh, their God before. Who is that God that can deliver from my hand? Now he is saying, you don't know me. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tell you that a monarch, a king is a mighty man. I have all the powers as the head of state, as the governor, as the chairman of this local government area, as the chairman of this community. I will show you. So, tell somebody, say, lie. If God be with us, who can be against us? If you come against me one way, you scatter seven ways. Look at verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They threw them into the fire. Look at verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was what? Surprised. <laughs> Your enemies will be surprised. Those who thought that you have nothing to offer will be surprised. They were, the, the king was astonished. That means surprised, embarrassed, confused. And he rose in a haste in that confused state and began to talk like somebody who was just drunken. Betaha Gogoro. And said, and said unto his counselors, What am I saying? Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered him, they, they answered and said unto the king, true, O king. Go forward. Then Nebuchadnezzar, and he answered and said, but I'm surprised, oh, you and I agree we cast three men, but I'm surprised, oh, I'm seeing four men, oh, they cast you, they were troubling you in poverty, they will see you in prosperity. They were troubling you in sickness. They will see you healthy and sound. They were troubling you in Nigeria. You will fly abroad and become a great man. He, he, he cast three men into the fire. And he saw four men. Not bound. The season of your bondage has expired. The, 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 your enemy's power has expired. He thought he will afflict you, punish you, torment you. In the office, there are some people who are, who are dealing with us in the offices like as if they have the final say. Plus, man of that office, you have a destiny. Let them not think that, that your destiny depends upon that office. Amen? And then, um, 
and then uh, and then say lose walking not lying down and crying your season of crying has expired walking in the midst of the fire and they have no pains will soon expire from somebody's body God will surprise your enemies and the form of the fort is like the son of God look at what the Bible says in verse look at verse 30 amen okay let me read verse 26 before verse 30 then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mount of the burning fiery furnace somebody that took you to a shrine is going back to the shrine to release you somebody that submitted you to a native doctor is going to beg native doctor no do I'm again they know they work because as they do have the thing, I mean the thing that affect. I don't think you are hearing me now. Somebody that threw you to the witchcraft coven is going back to meet the king of the witches that released TV. If you keep him here, I'm in trouble. I don't think you are hearing me now. Nebuchadnezzar went to the fire where he kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will go to where they locked your wealth and they will release your pressure. They will go to where they locked your womb. They will release your womb under pressure. They that actually sent you to the place where nobody looks at you as any, anybody will go back and release. Now then go take their hand, lose you. Now then go do them. Now it's about 10, persons. Your enemy will release you under pressure. Your enemy will release you under pressure. There's nothing they can do. They will release you under pressure. Somebody shout fire. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mount of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego ye servants of the most high God very soon they will recognize your person they will recognize you and your God that the God you serve is the superior God they have been calling you and eh, not be pastor and eh, not, be, not be church man just mocking you they will soon celebrate you Shadrach and I mean, Nebuchadnezzar has spoken to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is it true that you refuse to bow down to the God I, I, the image I've set up? But if not, if it's not true, then the music will go on again. Then let me see you worship. But if not, now fire you, they go. They have told you, you go die. Is that so? They have told you, in that family you marry, you no go become anybody. Is that so? Get ready, you'll become somebody. He said, who is that God that can deliver you out of my hand? Now me, they talk. You get person. Is that how they are challenging you and your family? Say, so who, who, which, which person will come challenge me? Eh? Now me get this party. This is, now we they control this uh, political party. You know, go feed maker. So far, you don't submit. Get ready, you will make it. He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the most high God. What is the next thing? Come forth and come hither. You were despised before, you will now be accepted. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what did they do? They came forth of the midst of the fire. You are coming out of failure. You are coming out of poverty. You are coming out of sicknesses. You are coming out of delay and disappointment. Whatsoever has kept you before will deny you and reject you in the name of Jesus. They came out. Verse 30. Then the king did what? <laughs> Those who punish you will recommend for your promotion. He says, to be able to pay for the losses I caused you, I'm going to take you to Mr. President. He will give you something. I'm going to take you to the governor. He will handle your case. I'm going to take you to the manager or the managing director of this company. Actually, I did this before, but everything you, you, you lose during that period, you will recover them. And the, the, the Bible says, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Right where they are, above those who are laughing and jesting against them. Brothers and sisters, I come to announce and to declare to you that your enemies will be put to shame, permanent shame, in the name of Jesus. Help is coming your way. I thought you would say amen. God is going to visit you with a surprise on your enemies. Your promotion will surprise your attackers. Those who can't see into trouble will bring you out under pressure. Get ready, surprise package is coming the way of your enemies in the name of Jesus. Let me read the last passage. Let me read the last passage before we pray. In Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. 
See what the Bible says from verse 10 to 11. For I hear the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. We will punish him, we will afflict him. And you eventually came to know about it. That powers are working against your destiny. They are troubling your children. They are troubling your business. They are, and those are not people who are far away. Look at it now. All my familiars watched for my whole team. Waiting for the day I will give up. I will die. Saying, peradventure, he will be enticed. And, will, and we shall prevail against him. And we shall take our revenge on him. Verse 11. But the Lord is with who? I don't know about you. Is with me. As what? God is going to beg my enemies to release me. Am I right? Are you seeing it there? God, I have somebody that can go and plead on my behalf. His name is Jehovah. You go and beg the witches. Please leave Stephen alone. Am I right? No, but the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall do what? They shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. What will happen at the end will, will make them to be ashamed. For they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be... They will never forget what happened to them. Welcome right back. So you have seen that of a truth, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that Nebuchadnezzar thought that nobody could deliver them. You know, they came out without being hurt. Nebuchadnezzar's soldiers got lost, got destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar himself became so surprised that he had to bring them out to promote it. He was challenging them, who is that God that will deliver you from my hands? But now, he declared that God, the Almighty God. And, and Shirak, Mishim, Abednego, servants of the Most High God. If you take your stand and Jehovah comes to your rescue, you will discover that you will change the confession of your enemies. And so, stretch out towards the television, let me pray for you, so that the Lord himself will perfect that which concerns you, so that the enemy will not actually dominate you to, to your grave. Touch hand to the television, confess our sins to God because our God has said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Father, I give you praise for these ones. I thank you because you are still the same yesterday and today and forever, the man of war. Therefore, right now, whosoever the enemy had kept in any form of prison or fire or pit and had been watching that the man or the woman, <coughs> excuse me, will not come out. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I command that enemy to be overthrown and those in captivity release under pressure in the name of Jesus. Those that have been in the pit of sickness, I command the sickness on, in your head, in your stomach, at your back, any other part of your body to expire right now in the name of Jesus. Those who are kept in the pit of poverty, I command that power to expire. And you come out to be celebrated in prosperity in the name of Jesus. Those who couldn't move out to become anything in life, I declare close doors open to you. Receive your breakthroughs and let Jehovah the man of war be glorified in your life. Thank you, Father, because I know you've answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen and amen. So, I'm expecting you at the World Conference because as you come, you have more stamina and strength to put the enemy to shame. As Jehovah is celebrated in your life. Remain your blessings. Awake, awake. There is war. The devil has gone mad. He advances like a great flood with terrorism, strange sicknesses like Ebola and other vices to steal, kill, and destroy. Join Liberation Power Ministries and Time Jesus Army at a force in our annual September War Conference to resist and turn back the enemy. Theme, you can win the war. Conference holds every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of September 2000. 2014 Fridays All Night Invasion of Demonic Strongholds 11 p.m. Saturdays War College to Train and Equip End Time Holy Ghost Warriors 9 a.m. Sundays Conference Operation and Commissioning of Frontline Fighters 9 a.m. Ministering General Odete Stephen GOC Edge Force with other Holy Ghost War Machines Venue The Edge Force Cantonment Liberation Power Ministries 82 Eliopara Road Mile 4 Port Harcourt. Jesus is man of war. Everywhere I look, there's fear around. Many minds are fainting because there's a cancer.
if you want to give your life to Jesus and be saved, please say this prayer and believe. Almighty God, I have been a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me as I now repent from all my sins. Accept and confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and accepting me as your own. In Jesus' name, Amen. Worship with us at Liberation Power Ministries, number 82, Ella Power Road, off Ada George Road, mile 4 for Tarkat, or call 003-310-7866. Email us at edgefirst at yahoo.com. He will be here again next week for another moment of freedom. Jesus is Lord.